Thank you. Thanks, Ron, and good morning, everyone. So what I want to do this morning is basically share a story, a short story on how to change the world by using maps. And I want to start the story in 2008 in Kenya during the post-election violence. At the time, the government was downplaying the severity of the situation, and the mainstream media could not be everywhere at the same time to document the escalating violence. So some friends of mine basically crowdsourced a live map of Kenya, allowing anyone in the country with access to a cell phone to send in reports of human rights abuses by SMS. And this way, the crowd was able to document human rights violations that would have otherwise gone completely undocumented. Two years later, a devastating earthquake struck Haiti. As soon as I heard the news, I decided to launch a live crisis map. Ten days after this, the head of FEMA mentioned that this map was the most comprehensive and up-to-date map available to the humanitarian community. But this map started in my living room in snowy Boston at the Fletcher School, some 1,500 miles away from Haiti. And because there was so much information to map, I reached out to my friends at the Fletcher School for help. And by the end of that week, we'd had some 100 volunteers who had joined the cause to help live map Haiti. And this was really no ordinary map. This map was alive. It was changing every 10 to 15 minutes. It was looking different because we were adding more and more content from Twitter, from Facebook, and from mainstream media as well. And in the meantime, a good friend of mine, Josh Nesbitt, who's an alum of Stanford University, managed to secure a local SMS number for us, which meant that anybody inside Haiti could send us a text message for free with their most urgent need and their location, which we could then map on the Ushahidi platform. And this SMS number was 4636, and the initiative became known as Mission 4636. And it was spearheaded by another Stanford friend of mine, Rob Monroe, who managed to recruit some 1,200 volunteers from 49 different countries around the world. And together, they were able to translate some 80,000 text messages in near real time from Haitian Creole to English. And thanks to these efforts and those at the Fletcher School, the US Marine Corps says they were able to save hundreds of lives in Haiti. A year later, another earthquake strikes, this time in Japan, resulting in a devastating tsunami. Right away, some friends of mine in Tokyo launched their own live crisis map, having been inspired by what they had seen us do in Haiti just the year before. And they too were no experts in disaster response. They were ordinary people simply wanting to find a way to help. And together, they also created the most comprehensive and up-to-date map available that the Japanese government and other foreign embassies in Tokyo were able to use. As this was happening, another crisis was unfolding, a very different type of crisis in Libya. And on March 1st, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, asked us to launch a live social media map of Libya because they needed more information to improve their situational awareness so that they could better coordinate their humanitarian relief operations on the ground. And a few days after that, even the World Food Program, the head of the World Food Program, mentioned that they too could use this map. And the World Food Program is the largest UN, UN field-based agency in the world. Now, who was behind this map? What well, was the Standby Volunteer Task Force, a new global network of more than 500 volunteers in over 50 different countries around the world. They are trained and skilled at live crisis mapping operations. They are the real Jedis of crisis mapping. <laughs> and you too can become a Jedi. Simply send us an email at join at standbytaskforce.com and we'd be more than happy to train you in the ways of live crisis mapping. But moving along, what about activism, civil resistance? We've seen this wave of protests sweep across the Arab world. And we've seen the role that technology has played. As one activist herself mentioned, we use Facebook to schedule protests, Twitter to coordinate, and YouTube to tell the world. But these activists are doing something else that's very special now. They're also mapping this content. It's happening right now in Syria today. And it's happened in Sudan earlier, and also in Egypt, Lebanon, Yemen, and Tunisia. And why are they using live maps? 
Well, as one security expert puts it, these live maps are almost as good as having your own helicopter. They provide you with a bird's eye view of what's unfolding in real time. So we thought, let's provide these activists with the best maps. And we know that the best helicopter is Airwolf. So we decided to launch our own Airwolf check-in service to allow these activists and disaster responders to use instant mapping in situations of disasters, crisis, and also revolutions. And I think this is a way that we can change the world one map at a time. Thank you very much.